thought I'd talk a little bit about hooped bivvy bags today. Some of you might be thinking that this is just a wheelie bin liner with a pole in it. I've heard people say that it's a coffin, but in the right situations this is a really good bit of kit. I've used a number of different bivvy bags over the years and quite a few of the hoop style ones as well. So I started off with um, the Dutch Army bivvy, then I moved on to the Snug Pack Stratosphere, which is a little bit lighter weight. More recently the Rab Ridge Raider, which is this one, and also the Rab Uni Shelter, um, which is a similar design to this, but it's got a zip that goes along the length here. It's a very waterproof bit of kit. You can see the water beading off nicely. This particular one is made from Event, which also means it's very breathable. You might be thinking now, what is the point of a hoop bivvy bag? This one weighs about a kilo, I think it's 1,040 grams, something like that. But I've got several tents, such as the Terra Nova Laser Photon, which only weighs 720 grams, I think. And the Nordisk Telemark 2 is a two-person tent, and that also only weighs a kilogram. So why would you go for something this small, when you can have a tent that you could probably sit up in cook your food, things like that. Before I talk a little bit more about that, I'm going to show you something that you don't see very often on Hoop Bivvy videos. I'm going to show you how I get into it. It's actually a work of art. So first up is take my boots off. Which is a balancing act on its own. So my feet are dry, because I'm stood inside the bivvy. Now it's just a case of crawling in backwards. And from inside here, I can zip things up and be protected from all the elements. So as you can see, there's plenty of space inside here and can actually fit my rucksack at the bottom or up here if I want to. I'll get back in and show you a couple more features. Doddle. Although it is a little bit harder when all of your sleeping gear is in here. Let me take that hat off. Right, so the first feature that I like about this bivvy is that you get full bug protection. So this no seer mesh is really good, keeps out all of the critters, which is great for me because considering I love the outdoors, I'm not a huge fan of bugs and spiders etc. When the weather's bad you can zip it up fully and get the right zip. And the material is breathable so you are still nice and safe however I tend to normally leave a little flap like this so I get some decent kind of airflow. I find there's nothing better than falling asleep staring at the stars, so I just tend to zip the bug net up most of the time. Just lay on my back and I've got perfect vision of the sky above. Getting out of the bivvy is pretty much the opposite of getting in. I just crawl out here stand on this bit so my feet stay dry and boots on get this zipped up the Ridge Raider does have guy lines as well if you wanted to tie it down but these are incredibly robust and will stand up to pretty much any winds that the UK can throw at it. 
that's mainly down to its great construction and its low profile. So why might you choose any kind of bivvy over a conventional tent? As you can see, you could pitch a tent pretty much anywhere on this terrain. However, if you wanted to get a little bit more stealthy, you, know, you wouldn't want to be pitching a tent in this stuff. Whereas you could quite easily, you know, nestle a bivvy down in that little gully there. You could get it in between those trees, no problem at all. You can drop a bivvy virtually anywhere. And it doesn't have to be a hoop bivvy like this one. The military have been using bivvy bags for decades now because they're stealthy, very easy to set up and virtually nothing can go wrong with them. You can use this bivvy like any other without the poles if you choose not to. However, I like to have the pole just because it keeps the material off my face. So that brings me on to why you may choose a hoop bivvy over just a regular bivvy bag really. So as I've already said, it does keep all this material off your face. So that reduces the irritation that you might get during the night. It also creates good angles for the water to roll off. This works even better when you've got your sleeping kit inside. Hoop bivvies tend to have more space inside too, so you can fit your rucksack in, gear, you can even have room to read if you wanted to in this one. But conventional bivvy bags, such as the British Army bivvy or the Alpkit Hunker XL, they've got plenty of room inside too. So you should be able to fit your rucksack at the bottom of your bag. So another brownie point for the hoop bivvy is the bug protection. So most conventional bivvy sacks don't have a bug net in them. Whereas most hoop bivvies do. It's also worth noting that the conventional bags that do have bug nets, you know, they still tend to have the bug net in laid on top of your face, which means you could still be bitten you know, through the material if your skin's touching it. Another good reason to have the hoop to get it off your face. Bivvy bags and hoop bivvies are a really discreet way of camping. They have a really low profile and if you were tucked away in here the chances of somebody seeing you are very small. So this opens opportunities to camp in places that you might not be able to camp in, especially here in the UK. The setup time on these is also really really quick and you can if you wanted to leave your sleeping bag and your sleeping pad already inside rolled up and just roll it all out you pretty much got everything ready to go. From start to finish you can set this up in under a minute and if you needed to get away in a hurry you can just drop the pole and roll everything up and put it in your bag. So as you can see there having the pole creates a really good airflow as well. This can help with the condensation um, however I've found this material the event the best by far when it comes to condensation. Virtually had none at all in this bit of kit. This event material is super breathable far superior to some of the, the cheaper materials that you can get on other brands. Obviously that reflects also in the price as this bit of kit is quite a bit more expensive than products like the Snug Pack Stratosphere or the Alp Kit Inan I think it's called. So as you've probably gathered I love this bit of kit um, but it's not suited for everybody. So I'll tell you some of the reasons why you shouldn't buy a bivvy or a hoop bivvy bag. Up first is the size. So there isn't a lot of space inside. Um, if you do get a little bit claustrophobic, this might not be the kit for you. If you're the sort of person that takes loads of gear, then you might not be able to fit it all inside. So you could end up leaving your, your rucksack at the side of your bivvy on a night. A bivvy might not be the best choice if you know that it's going to be raining. Once you're inside, if it's raining, it's not really a problem. But if it's chucking it down when you want to set up, then getting all your wet gear off, um, getting your gear set up and, and getting inside whilst it's raining you know, can be a bit tedious. You can supplement something like this with a tarp, but then again, you're adding more weight. So are you better off taking a tent in those situations? Probably. If the weather's bad, cooking isn't straightforward either. What I tend to do if the weather's not great is just climb inside, have this zipped open and my stove goes somewhere down here while I'm protected from most of the elements. If I need to do things like that I do keep a little 
microfiber sponge with me just to mop up any moisture that gets inside from the weather. Camping in winter is another scenario when a bivvy might not be the best choice. Bivvy camping is a lot of fun but in winter time you tend to get long nights um, and being holed up somewhere like this for 12 hours might not be so much fun. Sometimes if I want to get changed I just unclip these bits here then I can drop down the pole and that means I've got access to my top half so and maybe my trousers so I can get changed quite easily and then get the structure again just by clipping these back on. If you want to try hooped bivvy camping yourself but don't want to shell out top dollar on something like this one um, then I can recommend checking out Dan's channel um, the English Woodsman um, he looks at some some great budget friendly bivvy bags like this the cheaper bivvies tend not to be as breathable but it'll give you a good insight into whether this kind of camping's for you so let me know in the comments below if you've tried bivvy camping before or if it's something that you'd like to try in the future and if you'd like to see me using this bivvy camping up in the Peak District then check out one of these videos here. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.